What's going on, everybody? RJ Ochoa here from SB Nations, blogging the boys.com. Hope all is well wherever you are. Hope you're happy, safe, healthy. And um, this is the bad place. <laughs> this is it. Uh, we have a lot to get to. So let's go ahead and get kind of our uh, normal things out of the way. If you haven't yet, please subscribe here to the Blog on the Boys YouTube channel. We're trying to get to 30,000 subscribers before the season's over. I don't know if it's going to happen now because things just got bad. Uh, if you like what I do, the content that I create, you can follow me on social media, Twitter, Instagram, threads at RJ Ochoa, TikTok, RJ.Ochoa rj.ochoa at espionation.com is my email if that's more your speed obviously you can leave a comment down below and i'll do my best to get to those also make sure to please check out blogontheboys.com for the latest and greatest in the world of the dallas cowboys and if you check out blogontheboys.com you will see all sorts of madness of chaos of dysfunction of pain really as i move myself on the screen here what you're looking at is the home page for blogontheboys.com as i record this video for you it's 2 p.m central standard time uh, on Monday, November the 4th, uh, I was going to record another video. Obviously, we have our post-game show that went out. Uh, shout out to my friends at Bleach Report, where I originally streamed live. I do my post-game shows there now, so we throw them up here after it's done. And every day after the Dallas Cowboys play a game, whether they win, lose, or draw, whatever the case may be, I put together a video that is day after thoughts. We don't really have time or the ability to just kind of sort things through a day after thoughts kind of lens we're just going to talk we're just going to figure this out what you're looking at here like i said is the blog and the boys homepage as of 2 p.m um and if you look on the bottom left there uh we're here kind of the the biggest sort of talking point dak prescott to miss multiple weeks with a hamstring injury cooper rush to start now that was the opinion or the note from nfl networks ian rapaport and all the other national insiders extraordinary let me turn that autoplay off for you Ian and everybody else noted that Cooper Rush is the primary backup for the Dallas Cowboys, obviously, and Cooper Rush has obviously started games for this team in the past, went 4-1 in 2022, won his lone start for the Cowboys in 2021, that Sunday night win in Minnesota. Um, so that's part of the situation here. C.D. Lamb has a sprained AC joint, according to ESPN's Adam Schefter, but has a chance to play on Sunday against the Philadelphia Eagles. The Cowboys are almost a touchdown home underdog to their division rivals, and things are so bad that I don't even have the energy to care about the fact that it is Eagles week because I put myself back on the screen big time here. Um, this is bad. Okay, this is really, really bad. We are in a really bad place with the Dallas Cowboys right now. I have a very I'm having a very difficult time contextualizing how bad it is. Now, the day after thoughts uh thing I do, I did still write the article. Uh, it was somewhat therapeutic to to write on Monday morning. Um and in doing so, I noted there were six seasons or there I should say there are if, this is this is how I'm looking at things right now and and we have to kind of slow ourselves down because I've had several cups of coffee today, but also because the chaos is unfolding at such a rapid rate with Dak Prescott now hurt, C.D. Lamb now hurt. Now, Adam Schefter did note that Micah Parsons has a chance to play. And look, to be clear, we knew that Prescott and Lamb were hurt during Sunday's loss to the Atlanta Falcons, but finding out the full details certainly at least makes the Dak thing um, more concerning and more troubling. If we if we look at the drought that the Cowboys are in, and this is what I wrote in the article, if we if we if we you can't divide because now we're in a larger sort of half if, if you wanted to divide it but if you break up the drought that the Cowboys are in, in into two kind of eras one is much smaller and it's it's the era between Troy Aikman and Tony Romo it felt really long but it, it is smaller now at this point but if you live in the time from when Tony Romo took over as the full-time starter for the Dallas Cowboys in 2006 from then till now we're talking about 18 years you know however you kind of want to slice that in that time, there are, in my opinion, six truly kind of lost seasons for the team. This is the seventh, to be clear. But of those six, you have three of two different kinds. So we're talking about six years now. You've got 2010, 2015, and 2020. What do those three years have in common? 2010, 2015, 2020, all three seasons saw the franchise quarterback suffer a season-ending injury, right? That happened in all three instances. Twice it was Tony Romo, 2010 and 2015, and in 2020 it was obviously Dak Prescott. Um, the season was lost, obviously, when the franchise quarterback was was hurt. Now, in 2010, the Cowboys were really bad before Tony Romo got injured, and, and that just was kind of the final nail in the coffin, and then obviously Wade Phillips got fired and all that stuff. Um, there are three other years, though, right? If, if we recognize that in the kind of 2006 and on time frame those there are three years where the quarterback got hurt 
And then there are three years that were just broken, that were just left-footed, that just, you know, the, the team utterly disappointed for different reasons or another. There's 2008, and I've talked before with a good friend of mine, Bobby Belt. He's been on Blog on the Boys many times, 105 through the fan, NFL Network producer. Bobby's awesome. 2008 was such a talented Dallas Cowboys team, but they just couldn't stop getting in their own way. Didn't even make the playoffs, 44-6. to six. Tony Romo saying, if that's the worst thing that ever happens to me, all that stuff. 2008 was a lost year. I would also put 2017 in this box. Um, that was the year, if it feels like forever ago, that the Cowboys kind of on a weekly basis were fighting the NFL, where Jerry Jones was fighting the NFL, whether or not Zeke Elliott was going to get suspended. He ultimately was. Um, it was a, a very tough time. There was the burning of Atlanta that happened in 2017. Speaking of the Falcons, uh, the Cowboys got humiliated um, on Sunday Night Football against the Eagles in what was at the time the worst loss ever sustained um, in the building. That happened on the night that Jerry Jones was honored at halftime for going the Hall of Fame, and then they lost to the Chargers on Thanksgiving Day. That was three games in a row in 2017 where the Cowboys did not break double digits. It was the first time in franchise history that they went three consecutive games scoring in the single digits. So you've got 2008, you've got 2017, and then I would put 2019 there, and I promise I'm going somewhere with this. Um, that year, the Cowboys started off 3-0, and and then everything fell apart. They lost three games in a row to fall back to 500, and they just really finally ultimately quit on Jason Garrett. They got blown out by the Bills on Thanksgiving Day. Uh, they had that horrible Thursday night football loss against the Bears a week after, and it really felt like Garrett was going to get fired then, but he wasn't. In fact, he was never fired. He was just allowed to have his contract run out and not be brought back. And I say all that to say I was trying to to liken this season to one of those. I was trying to draw the comparison. I was trying to say this season is that one. This is this is broken in the way that was broken. And this season is broken in, in its own utterly horrific and chaotic way i mean we don't have to relitigate the all in and the doing nothing and the bringing zeke back and the delaying the contract extensions and the pot stirring and the gaslighting we don't have to relitigate all of it um but it clearly you know was all born in the darkness after the team got humiliated by the green bay packers in the wild card round first two seed ever to lose in the wild card round granted it's only been possible for a few years now i mean all this different stuff i mean this this season has been broken for a very long time you didn't need me to tell you that and now you inject this element of the quarterback's going to miss some time on top of the fact that cd lamb is dealing with the ac joint sprain on top of the fact that micah parsons is out or has been out, and that demarcus lawrence has been out, and marshawn nealon has been out and tyler guyton the first round pick isn't totally taking right away isn't turning into a superstar right away, which has kind of been par for the course for first round picks around here. On top of the fact that the coach is in a contract year and the staff is in a contract year and the defensive coordinator was brought back, you know, having had time served with this team before and everything's so bad. Everything is bad. Everything is awful. Everything is the worst that it could have possibly have ever been. This might be, I, the word vibes gets used so much nowadays, and I'm sorry for doing that, but from a vibe standpoint, this might be the worst season in the time that I'm talking about because so much of this was by design. So much of this was on purpose. So much of this was was what the team wanted. And so I have no idea what comes next. I mean, there are more games left than they have played. Think about that. Like, it, it feels I, I mean, like it's pretty bad, right? And there is still more to come, not just in general, not that there are, are still games left, we're not even halfway there. Like that's crazy when you really think about it. Like we're and 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 I don't. What comes after this? I don't know. It, I, I, maybe it's Ben Johnson. I doubt it. Maybe it's you know Jason Witten. Everybody wants to joke about. It. I doubt it. I mean, I have no idea what comes next. We are truly, totally in the wilderness, in the darkness. There's no north star. There's nothing except pain and chaos and toxicity surrounding us. So much so that this isn't even fun. I mean, I've been talking about this for a few weeks now. I'm not having fun. I don't think you're having fun. I think we all participate in watching the Dallas Cowboys because it's just kind of part of our lives at this point in time. But nobody's enjoying this. I mean, what what is enjoyable about it? And now the Prescott injury is is unfortunate in in the worst kind of way. They're three and five. They are three and five, which is extremely, extraordinarily. We talked about this last week, why it was so important to win in Atlanta. It is impossible, basically, from a mathematical standpoint, to overcome a three and five start on the season. I know this team has done it with Prescott under center. There's no way they can do this. And this brings me to a whole different point. And I don't have any graphics or anything for today. This is one of those videos. 
I mean what I'm about to say with the highest level of respect for Cooper Rush. If you've been watching me for years, you know that throughout 2022, I more than gave Cooper Rush his flowers. And I ate a lot of crow because I didn't think it was wise to bring him back. And so this has nothing to do with Cooper Rush. This is just about the state of this team, the state of this organization, the state of this franchise. Okay, this is not a Cooper Rush point. All right. But if the Cowboys start Cooper Rush on Sunday against Philadelphia, you have every right to turn the game off. You have every right to disconnect because that is not the move of a serious team. That is not the move of a team that understands the bigger picture here. You're three and five, bro. You're not coming out of this. You're not coming, you know, away from this unscathed. You're getting scathed. This whole season is over. And it's November the 4th. And it was over before today. It was over before Sunday. This season has been over. You ensured that with your genius, you know, puppeteering of everything you have going on here with the headlines that jumped up on, on Saturday about your you know, third best running back on your team, being upset about being inactive or disciplinary actions or mutual decisions or whatever the case may be. We're exhausted here. But that point aside, Cooper Rush has been extraordinary for the Cowboys in the past, was wonderful in 2022, was a big reason why that team had the success that it did. They went on to the playoffs. They won a playoff game, which they never got credit for, which remains one of the dumbest things, but I'm not here to talk about that. But Cooper Rush went 4-1 and one in the five games he started. And the only game he lost was against the team that had the best regular season that year in the Philadelphia Eagles. He obviously won the singular game he started the year before. So this has nothing to do with Cooper Rush because that's not going to happen right now. And even if it does happen, even if Cooper Rush starts, call it four games, the next four games, if you want to play that game, let's call it five games. Four of them are at home where the Cowboys haven't won a game. They're one of two teams in the NFL to be winless at home so far this season. The other one is the New York Giants, by the way. Next five games with the Cowboys, home against the Eagles, home against the Texans, on the road against the Commanders, home against the Giants, home against the Bengals. Before we move any further, you're about to be inundated with Cowboys takes from your friends and family. I want you to know because the whole world is going to see this mess. That's the way the NFL designs. The schedule makers design November is it's Cowboys time, baby. And everyone's getting the worst version of this team. And what do I mean by that? This Sunday's game against the Eagles, it's probably going to be America's game of the week on Fox. That means it's going to be basically distributed to the entire country. The next week against the Texans at home, that's on Monday Night Football. I'm going to be at that game. I'm very excited if you're going to be there. Uh, I'm going to try to make the, the you know experience enjoyable. But you know we can talk about that when the time comes. The week after that, they visit the Washington Commanders. That's a noon kickoff at, you know, for the moment. But the Commanders are such a, an interesting team that you have to wonder if that draws Fox number one or Fox's number one crew in, in big stage like we talked about America's Game of the Week. The week after that, the New York Giants, that's on Thanksgiving Day. Traditionally, that is the biggest football audience outside of the Super Bowl. Okay, so we're going we're gonna to have this team be exposed to that. And then the week after that, they play on Monday Night Football again against the Cincinnati Bengals. So all of this stuff, whatever it is, is going to be taking place within the or with the most, you know, attention possible on this team. I mean, make sure I don't miss anything here. Back to the Cooper Rush point. There's so much happening. Like I said, I couldn't do day after thoughts because it, it, it was too disorganized. I just needed to get on here and, and rant in a way that hopefully uh, you can empathize with. There's nothing that Cooper Rush can do to help this team. And that's not an indictment on Cooper Rush. That has nothing to do with Cooper Rush. This team is done. It's cooked. It's over. You have to understand. You have to be willing to accept that. It's why so many people have been saying this team better not trade away draft capital before Tuesday's deadline. If they're going to make any moves, they need to sell. They need to sell, 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 sell. This is a bad team that has to figure it out for 2025. And that being said, if you are really interested in that, if you're truly a forward-thinking operation, then it's time to see Trey Lance. We need to see Trey Lance start on Sunday against the Eagles. At the very least, he has to be significantly involved. And if he's not going to be, then what the hell did you trade for him for? I mean, seriously, uh, we all know that the trade was horrible at this point in time. I don't think anybody ever thought it was anything but that. But if you're not going to start him, what was it for? We know that Dak Prescott's under contract. And if you're somebody who thinks that that's going to change or he's not going to be a starter next year, I don't have the time or energy to have this argument with you, but you have to understand that he's under contract. So that being said, both Trey Lance and Cooper Rush are in the final year of their respective contracts with the team. And I don't know what the answer is. If Trey Lance looks good, plays well, I don't think that's just really possible, but obviously there is a, a world where that does happen in a world of infinite possibilities. But if that does happen, it at the very least offers you a chance to be creative. And I don't necessarily trust this team to be creative, but I would rather go down that route and I would rather figure that out because again, if you're not going to start him now, then what did you trade for him for? This team has refused 
to admit their mistakes to the highest level, whether it's trading for Trey Lance, whether it's bringing Zeke back, whether it's delaying the extensions for Dak or for CD or continuing to delay the extension for Micah Parsons. They refuse to fess up and to admit when they don't know what they're doing, when they step in it, and when they bring everybody down with them. And right now, I'm not saying that your trade for Trey Lance was smart or good or wise or that it was the right move because none of those things are true. But right now, it is the move that makes the most sense. And if you do not do it, if you make us watch Cooper Rush on Sunday, then you're really confirming to us that you are disillusioned, that you are this disconnected from reality to where you want to throw him out there with this team that is missing so many of its most important players against a very talented Philadelphia Eagles team who I don't even have the energy to hate or to poke or to troll because that's what you've done to us, to your most ardent, hardcore, loyal fans. You have broken us beyond the point of rationalization anymore. We are simply here biding our time. We are like you did with the entire offseason and the most important decisions you had to make, watching the grains of sand tick down the hourglass so that we can call 2024 a wrap and move on to a time and a period that you can't tarnish and you can't mess up. Although if history has taught us anything, it's that you will find a way. For this week, though, for the time being, just stop being yourselves and let the football people do the football things. And let's do our best to accept that this season is over and try to assess and gather the most information possible so that next year, when you hopefully stay out of the way, things can be better. But right now, this thing is a wrap. This season is over. That's probably my biggest day after thought. And that was all true before this injury news, before everything that happened with Dak Prescott and CeeDee Lamb. It's unfortunate. It's very, 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 very difficult. It's damn near impossible to have your season be such a wrap in the first week of November. I mean, the time just fell back. <laughs> and I mean, the season is over. That's the genius that we are watching here at work on a weekly basis. It's unbelievable, but totally believable, like I've been saying for several weeks at this point in time. So yeah, that's kind of it. That's my rant. I'm sure I'll have another one as the week unfolds and who knows what with it being Eagles week and whatnot, but the Dallas Cowboys have no one to blame but themselves. But I'm sure, if I'm sure of anything at the end of this, they will find somebody else because that's their specialty. That's what they care about the most, shifting the blame, shifting the bad attention, making sure that they get the good headlines and that everything else is what we have to pick up with and sift through and sort as we try to figure things out moving forward. <sighs> you know, I thought I would feel better. I really did. Um, turns out I don't. Turns out I'm still mad, but I hope <laughs> I hope you feel better on some level. My name is Arjo Ochoa. Um, yeah, I'll be back tomorrow. I'll be, I'll be back here talking about this team that we hate. I mean, I hate this team. Um, but I'll be back tomorrow nonetheless. Uh, if you haven't yet, please subscribe here to the Blog of the Boys YouTube channel. Uh, you can follow me on social media, Twitter, Instagram, threads at RJ Ochoa, TikTok, RJ Ochoa, emails RJ Ochoa at SBNation.com, or you can leave a comment down below, and I will do my very best to get to those as well. For now, though, I bid you adieu. I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope you have some sort of team or some sort of thing that can bring you sports joy because uh, we know that's not going to be this team anytime soon. Thanks so much for hanging out, everybody. We will see you next time, and uh, have a great day.